This is Twit. Yeah, one thing I wanted to talk about, it's really not DXing or contesting, but it's something we all go through, and I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier tonight. Uh, when you first get your license or when you first upgrade, and uh, Brian, if you want to go ahead and start off uh, my slide there. Um, now, when you see this, do you go running uh, to in the other direction? Well, you know, actually, it's probably not a fair question because I do too because that clown's a little creepy, but... I'm mostly talking about the microphone. If you're afraid of that microphone, you could have mic fright. <laughs> and you know what? We've all had it. I'm going to say at least 80 to 90 percent of the people I talk to have had it when they first got their ticket and when they first uh, got on, uh, out on HF. So I'm just going to kind of give you a little bit of a script or guideline. And if you want to print this off and have it in front of you, it may help you get over that hump or that initial fear of getting out there and making those first few contacts other than uh, your buddy down the street or uh, uh, some sked you set up with somebody you knew. So um, the first thing you're going to want to do uh, is um, put on, turn on your radio, obviously, and pick a band um, that's open and tune up and down the frequency. Find what you think is a clear frequency, and you're going to want to sit there for a little bit, park it there, and uh, listen for a couple minutes. Make sure you don't hear anybody. Um, and then you're going to hit that microphone button, and you're going to say, is this frequency in use? Wait a couple more seconds. Say it again. Is this frequency in use? If nobody comes back to you, then here comes the brave part. You're going to call CQ, CQ, CQ. This is, and then you're just going to give your call sign in standard phonetics, calling CQ and standing by. Now, you might not get a call right away like that. They're still tuning you in. So wait a few seconds and do it again. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November Victor 9 Lima calling CQ and standing by. Now, if somebody comes back to your call, make sure you have pen and paper right next to you, and you're going to want to write down their call sign, their name if they give it, and the signal report if they give it. And, and they might also give their location, the DX country or the state they're in. So if try and write all that down if you can. And if you have time, glance at your radio and see if you can uh, see their signal strength. Now, if you don't get all that, don't worry. Uh, you're just you're just starting off. It's it, to be expected. So don't uh, kill yourself over this. But at least try and get the call sign. So you can always ask for the other stuff on the next go around. So now when they're done, it's going to come back to you. And all you're going to do is uh, respond by saying hello and give their call sign and give them the signal report and the state and country that you're in and tell them it's nice to meet them, give them your name, and then you're going to want to spell your name out phonetically. Um, and then ask if they got it, you know, QSL, did you understand that? So typically it would be, um, hello, K9EID, uh, you're 5'9 here in Wisconsin. It's nice to meet you, Bob. My name is Valerie, Victor Alpha Lima, Echo, Romeo, India, Echo, QSL. And um, once you do that, it sends it back to them. So now they can uh, respond if they need any clarification. Now, if you want to get brave and go into a rag chew, um, I suggest you write down a bunch of different questions. So instead of asking QSL with the question mark at the end, throw in one of these questions or any other questions you might think of your, on your own. Um, I put in like this, the mainstream question is what are your operating conditions? That's a very common question and for good reason. Everybody likes to talk about the radio, their antenna, their amplifier. So that's always a good one to throw out there. Um, if you want to ask them something a little more not so mainstream, you can ask, tell them that you just got your license and ask them how long they've been licensed or ask them how they got interested in the hobby or did they have an Elmer and how did they meet their Elmer? What's their favorite part of the uh, hobby? Do they like to DX? If they do, ask them how many countries they have or what was the first country they ever worked. Another good one might be, um, did ham radio have any influence on the job they had? Now, there's so many other questions you can probably think of, but what I'm going to recommend is that you write them down or, or print this off and have it in front of you. Because no matter how prepared you think you are, when you get out there and make those first couple of QSOs, every thought you have in your head is going to disappear completely. So you're going to want to have it there on paper. And that's why you want to want to write down their name and their call sign because you're going to forget it all because you're going to be so nervous. So once you do that, and you, the more you do it, the easier it's going to be. So now you're done with um, 
this, you know, with this cue so, and you want to move on to the next one, it's just real easy. All you have to do is say thank you, give them their name and their call sign, and tell them it was nice to meet them and give them a 7 3. Um, and then it sends it back to them and just make sure that you give them time to say goodbye. And when they send it back to you, you're just going to give your call sign and, and, and standard phonetics and say QRZ. And that lets the world know you're ready to take the next cue. So now when you're done for the night, all you have to do is say your call sign, you're going and tell them that you're going QRT and that's it. And you need to just congratulate yourself. Big pats on the back because you know what? That's really a big accomplishment, believe it or not. You're not alone in uh, being scared to get on the uh, air and uh, make that first contact. So um, anyway, that's, that's that for that. And I, I'm going to tell you, seriously, it took me probably two weeks before I first transmitted on two meters. I just sat and listened the whole time. And I'd get try and get the courage, and I just never did. Eventually, I did. but um, And then uh, on HF, it took a little bit longer. But I eventually got there. But I wish I would have had this written down and in front of me because I just goofed it up so bad. So 